So, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to now pass over to uh, Mr. Uh, Dicky Cartioni, um, who's going to talk to us uh, about the opportunities for investment and trade. If I could pass over to you, please. Thank you. Yo, thank you, Mr. Cook. It is my great pleasure, of course, uh, to compliment pa Adam's uh, uh, presentation with Indonesian uh, recent economic development. And of course, I will also expand the authorities' policy response uh, in navigating the economy coming out alive and strong uh, from this unprecedented challenge uh, due to the pandemic COVID. Uh, due to my time limit, I will be quick on some slides and give more focus on Bank Indonesia monetary policy response. And I hope uh, the material is already been distributed, or maybe I will send you a letter if you need a more information. Uh, let me start with the domestic economic condition and prospect. COVID-19 outbreak uh, actually, you know, created a severe slump to all countries around the world, including, of course, emerging countries like Indonesia. Central Bank of Indonesia has been uh, doing so much actually uh, uh, to support the development of the uh, country uh, to, to, to uh, mitigate all the risks, uh, 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 you know, during the, the pandemic. Uh, we are expecting a moment of recovery in this quarter uh, and the third quarter, of course, in uh, 2021, aligned with the relaxation of the large-scale social restriction starting in the mid of June. Uh, this policy uh, has been uh, complemented strongly with the fiscal stimulus uh, uh, from the government. The projection of 2020 GDP, yes, we have to admit it's uh, going to fall between uh, 0 0.9 to 1.9 percent before bouncing back uh, again to uh, 5 or 6 percent in 2021. Uh, reflecting our strong effort of the government and central bank in overcoming all the risks and shocks. Compared with the other peer countries, we consider Indonesia is in a good position. We have a strong footing in uh, many aspects, uh, as already explained with uh, a very uh, good uh, uh, elaboration from, uh, from Pa Adam. Uh, we are in the has uh, you know in the uh, uh, more favorable uh, growth and even uh, more uh, vibrant growth uh, in the future. Uh, moving on the external sector, uh, Indonesian position during this challenging uh, uh, condition remain uh, resilient. In the second quarter, a narrow deficit uh, has been uh, uh, shown in the current account and some improvement toward capital and financial account. Uh, are seen in our our slide. Uh, the resilience is bolstered by the uh, adequate position of the reserve asset. It's uh, crawling bit by bit. Uh, you know now uh, 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 at the level of 130 billion at the May at the, at the end of uh, May, equivalent uh, to 8.3 months import or eight months import plus funding government external debt. We are uh, in the safe position. Looking at this number, this is really above uh, internal, uh, international adequacy standard over, over three months. And looking forward, we view this number is going to be increased and, and of, it's always be sufficient, uh, sufficient to, to support our uh, uh, economic outlook and stability. Even more, Bank Indonesia projects uh, more narrow current account deficit around 1.5% of GDP in 2020. This is um, much, much lower than a previously estimation, accounting for 2.5 to 3 percent of GDP. Uh, furthermore, we project the deficit to fall below to uh, 2.5 or 3 percent in uh, 2021. Uh, of course, this uh, external position will support our uh, uh, foreign uh, capital uh, uh, management. Uh, we believe that uh, foreign capital inflow and adequate uh, foreign exchange supply of, uh, in domestic economy uh, will, of course, support our rupiah um, and moving forward, it will appreciate further. On the other hand, uh, inflation uh, remains low. We can see from the figures 
CPI inflation was 1.9 year on year throughout June, which caused by the fall of demand uh, reflecting the COVID-19 outbreak. Of course, uh, uh, the demand is quite subdued uh, uh, along uh, along a uh, few months. Um, uh, uh, I think the adequate supply of goods and a smooth chain distribution is support our our uh, uh, inflation uh, remains in check. In this respect, uh, Bank Indonesia will consistently maintain the stability of price and intend to strengthen a policy coordination. Of course, if talking about Indonesia, the archipelago country, we need to uh, hand, you know, uh, support the, the, the distribution hand by, uh, by uh, hand in hand with the local government and also uh, uh, with the uh, uh, people from the uh, regencies. Uh, turn to uh, financial market, in, uh, financial market performance uh, remain positive. Uh, yield of government fell to 0.3, is uh, only a, a slight uh, 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 decrease uh, in May 2020. And, and I think uh, we are in the, you know, a stable position in the mass financial market. Meanwhile, in the Jakarta Composite Index, DCI in May 2020, is relatively uh, in better performance compared to other stock market in the uh, Asian countries. If we move to the uh, financial stability, if we uh, observe of the financial stability uh, uh, as a whole, we can see that uh, financial stability system is quite, uh, uh, you know, in check. Uh, everything is well maintained. Although we kept, uh, we'll keep ourselves, uh, of course, very cautious. Uh, we, of course, uh, strengthen our supervision, especially in the micro potentials. Toward the potential risk may harm the uh, uh, the institution, uh, single uh, uh, banks or other uh, financial market institution need to be uh, closely monitored uh, uh, due to the uh, impact of the outbreak. The capital adequacy ratio of the uh, uh, banking system is accounted for 22% in April 2020. It's, consider uh, it's uh, considerably high. Now, while no performing loans uh, uh, remain at the low and uh, uh, stable uh, uh, level. On the other hand, in line with the weak uh, uh, domestic demand, and of course, it's a more cautious attitude from the uh, banks, uh, uh, the lending and uh, of course, the intermediaries process uh, have shown the uh, kind of suboptimal function. Uh, uh, the credit growth was only 5.73% year on year in April 2020. But on the other hand, uh, uh, the deposit growth is quite uh, accelerated to 8.1% uh, uh, year on year. Uh, we can see from the figures. Uh, I think banks are, are you know, in the good position uh, uh, on, the, on their, their liquidity. Uh, let me turn to the, this is my, my, my main uh, uh, presentation today. Uh, on the government and central bank policy response uh, to, to mitigate and also to navigate uh, the economy to uh, uh, come off alive and strong uh, from the uh, pandemic. Uh, on central bank policy side, Bank Indonesia conducted a, a policy mix uh, aimed at maintaining economic stability and we we boosting the economic growth uh, through uh, several uh, uh, policy uh, uh, response. Uh, the policy makes a sort of balance between managing uh, monetary stability. Uh, at, at the same time, we try to, uh, of course, maintain the financial stability uh, and, of course, try to uh, achieve a sustained economic growth by optimizing the enactment of, uh, uh, of uh, our policy. First, uh, uh, we try to uh, balance between the uh, macro indicator with our monetary policy. We also try to uh, uh, strengthen our macro prudential policy. We also introduce a lot of uh, new uh, means in payment system. We try to uh, uh, find, uh, you know, to find uh, right ingredients in deepening our financial market. And of course, we, we also uh, strengthen our coordination with other authorities. Uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see uh, the range of our monetary policy response. Over uh, 
uh, the period of June. Uh, of, I'm sorry, from from I think from the beginning of uh, the beginning of the uh, outbreak of the COVID-19 until uh, at the end of the Ju uh, uh, June. Uh, first, uh, we are already lowering our course policy rate. We have to cut uh, 25 basis points consecutively. Now we are at the level of 4.25 percent. Uh, is quite uh, considered high. It's quite considered uh, uh, high because uh, 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 you know we try to also maintain the, the the stability of our exchange rate. And of course, we also lowering our reserve requirement. And as, as well as that, we, we, we try to provide and inject uh, ample liquidity to the banking industry and also to the economy. Uh, moving forward, Bank Indonesia intend to keep, uh, um, uh, to keep our monitoring to global uh, development. Of course, the dynamics is so, uh, uh, you know, so fast, uh, so uh, changing so fast. And the financial market, of course, is also uh, quite uncertain and uh, uh, full of uncertainties. Uh, uh, COVID-19 transmission uh, uh, certainly have a, you know, uh, what we call it, uh, a difficult uh, to predict uh, uh, um, uh, in the future. We reckon, uh, we reckon more coordinated follow-up policy need to be done by the government and the uh, 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 central bank. Uh, we also, as uh, you know, strengthen our coordination in the uh, Financial Stabil System Stability Committee, uh, maintaining uh, macroeconomic and financial system stability as well as uh, supporting the national economic recovery. Uh, on the government side, I believe uh, uh, all of you are already quite aware, uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, policy stimulus, uh, mitigate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic throughout the economy. The government, as already mentioned by, uh, by Pak Adam, has unveiled around uh, 700 trillion stimulus package that way higher than its prior package is only for uh, uh, 400 trillion. Uh, to support government effort uh, in navigating the impacts of the pandemic, Bank Indonesia is fully aware the needs to provide the sufficient liquidity to the economy. Uh, recently, with the political support from the President, the Cabinet, and the House of Representatives, Bank Indonesia has agreed upon a burden-sharing mechanism that taking into account, of course, our cautious monetary fiscal policy and, uh, of course, the vigilant, in maintaining, uh, uh, maintaining vigilant policy in maintaining health uh, macroeconomic indicators. We are all, all concerned uh, the extraordinary, extraordinary increase in, in, in liquidity and uh, deficit create uh, enormous pressures on the uh, fiscal and inflation. Therefore, Bank Indonesia will step up to support the government policy in many fronts. Uh, we believe burden sharing mechanism can be accounted properly in terms of macroeconomic policies and uh, mechanism, a mechanism can be accounted by by uh, applying the market uh, mechanism. Uh, of course, we are also mindful with the uh, rating, rating agencies. Uh, 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 of course, rating, uh, rating agencies will assess us uh, quite frequently. And of course, we also try to uh, balance with the acceptable uh, uh, political uh, 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 interest. Uh, last but not least, before we for closing, uh, allow me to to elaborate uh, our role in uh, uh, in the real sector uh, in creating investment opportunity in the country. As uh, Pa uh, Ensliman already uh, mentioned in the beginning before we start the, the webinar, uh, our uh, branches around the country is quite uh, active uh, in providing all information on the economy, even. Uh, we, we count ourselves as an advisor to the local government. Bank Indonesia support the local government, of course, also the central government uh, through end-to-end -end process. We uh, have a close coordination at any level by promoting the investors relation unit, which is uh, involving all 46 offices uh, around the country, head and representatives, uh, representative office both regional and abroad, uh, hand in hand with our uh, embassy around the world. 
representative office around the country, um, you know, actually is re uh, really, uh, you know, under understand about uh, the condition of, uh, uh, you know, our our uh, uh, economic at the at the ground. They are uh, ready and well equipped to support the stakeholders in terms of promoting investment, trade, and tourism. They can explain to you uh, uh, in and many aspects of the uh, uh, you know uh, businesses and also uh, investment. This is done by providing the economic advice, and of course, uh, we always update the regional government with the Indonesian economy and government policy. Uh, another support provided uh, uh, by Bank Indonesia is uh, the linkage, uh, facilitating the facilitating the the communication uh, with regional government on even uh, with uh, uh, directly to the investor. Uh, currently, our uh, investment promotion is prioritized to regional government investment project, so it's quite uh, relevant to Pak Ansliman uh, 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 concern. Nonetheless, we also support a national project as long as uh, it is incorporated with the regional government. Uh, lastly, in promoting trade, we also uh, support and focus on our uh, uh, SME's product. We also quite active in uh, guiding the potential uh, uh, SME's uh, in the region. Uh, but uh, of course, it's worry less. We also support non-BI guidance SME's in certain occasions. So uh, we quite, uh, you know, have a uh, broad uh, support to the uh, uh, players in the economy. Mr. Dickey, thank you very much indeed. And, and Mr. Adam, thank you. So we've got a, we've had a very thorough and detailed briefing in terms of the situation in Indonesia and the opportunities, and of course, the economic situation. Um, Ainsley, perhaps if, if I could ask you, as somebody who's got an awful lot of experience in Indonesia, and particularly in terms of your official roles, perhaps you could just talk to us, um, recognizing those opportunities and the sort of the macroeconomic factors. If you could just talk about very briefly, perhaps it, the trade opportunities and, and the priority sectors and sort of the coherence of the approach that, that's operating at the moment. And whether you could just talk about any potential quick wins and, and touch on how easy it is to trade with Indonesia from your experience, from a Scottish perspective, um, and, and any sort of um, thoughts that you might have in terms of opportunities that we can we can learn from from this from this background. Uh, good afternoon from Jakarta, everyone. Uh, can you hear me, Doug? Is that okay? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. Okay, right. Thanks very much for the invite, uh, and thank you very much for allowing me to catch up with our friends from the, the Indonesian Embassy in Bank Indonesia. I agree with much of what uh, Pat Adam was highlighting in terms of opportunities, and I'll touch upon a couple of them in a minute. I would also like to point out that Indonesia is one of the darlings of the bond market at the moment, and that's due in no small way to the, the efforts that uh, the Ministry of Finance and Bank Indonesia have made to stabilize the, the economy. Um, and my hat's really off to them. And a lot of businesses here have been very, very impressed by the way they've, they've addressed these challenges. From a Scottish perspective, I, uh, to be honest, I, I often struggle uh, with the fact that I don't think a lot of companies in Scotland really appreciate the scale of what we're dealing with. ASEAN is the fifth largest economy in the world, uh, trade, uh, trading block in the world, with a GDP of three trillion, and Indonesia constitutes 40% of that, or thereabouts. Uh, most countries here in ASEAN, particularly Indonesia, have a very good demographic dividend skewed towards a very young population, and also some of the highest urbanization rates in the world. For a country like Indonesia, this means that the, one of the, ma the main contributor to driving e economic growth is domestic consumption. It's a very active market in that respect. And in terms of how Scotland is doing, countries of a comparable size, say New Zealand, Norway, currently do many more times trade with Indonesia. In fact, I think New Zealand is probably between half and two thirds of the trade of the UK. It just gives you an indication of, of the, the opportunity. Although when you look at trade statistics, I would caution that in Southeast Asia, you don't get the, the full picture. Um, you've got to understand the role Singapore plays as a hub, and dare I say, sometimes an unwitting participant in, in grey market channels. Similarly, when you look at FDI, um, UK is not necessarily one of the highest, uh, it might be 10th or something at the moment, but a lot of companies will invest through Singapore and Hong Kong. 
because of, because of the tax treaties, particularly to do with uh, withholding tax. When a country like uh, Indonesia experiencing this sort of growth it has over the last 20 years, clearly a sexual infrastructure is an obvious area for, for opportunity. Now, but when it comes to the largest uh, pro larger projects from a UK competitive standpoint, or Scotland competitive standpoint, they often start off in the back foot compared to the likes of Japan, Korea and China, where I feel the alignment of government and business interests is very strong. Uh, government, they, their governments will fund feasibility studies often, and soft loans from their governments are typically easier to access, although of course, uh, UK does have facilities like UK export finance. That being said, there, are, there is a lot of opportunities on the services side for companies, particularly in areas like smart city tech, circular economy planning, uh, digital twinning, waste management planning. In addition, when it comes to energy infrastructure and climate change commitments, uh, Indonesia has made some very aggressive targets. So renewable energy is one sector that uh, we are really focusing on right now for Scotland. However, uh, I would like to see a little bit more deregulation in the power distribution uh, sector in Indonesia, particularly in um, the eastern part of Indonesia. I think by doing that, we would see a, a lot more activity. And in fact, uh, if you look at some of the characteristics of the islands in eastern Indonesia and Scotland, they actually share quite a lot of the similar characteristics in terms of they're off grid, they're reasonably remote, uh, they've, all, they've had problems um, you know, generate, generating the local economy. Scotland's introduced a lot of solutions in terms of renewable, circular economy. So there's a lot we can, uh, that I believe Indonesia can, can learn from Scotland and there's a, there's a lot that Scottish companies could be doing here in that area. Um, another area where Scotland's getting much stronger is waste and I, I would mention this because no fault of the citizens of Indonesia. Indonesia has become the second largest contributor to, to maritime plastic waste in the world. Um, so it's a real issue. And part of that's largely due to the collection and processing of waste. So this is an infrastructure sector that offers, I think, huge opportunities. And indeed, my company is looking at it. So it's anyone in that sector, Indonesia would be one of the countries to look at. Um, I have mentioned Norway and New Zealand. And like Scotland, they both have a thriving food and drink sector. And I have to say they have done very well promoting their products, particularly to the middle class Indonesian consumer, as well as setting up uh, distribution channels. I am pleased that uh, I think the SDI is now looking more carefully at this sector in respect of Indonesia because we've got a lot of catch up to do. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm fed up being served Norwegian seafood for the last six years. Um, I would also point out, I mean, when I go back to Scotland, people say, oh, Indonesia is a, a Muslim country. Well, it's a Muslim majority population, but it's a secular uh, country and, and it's very diverse. But it's a lot of different religious groups. And if, uh, if you look at the, the spirit sector, there's probably more whiskey drinkers here than there are in Scotland, to be quite frank. So that is a, that's a sector that Scotland's done quite well in. There's some tough regulations to deal with. I hope we will see some improvement in that in the future because um, that, that would uh, certainly deal with some of the grey market issues that uh, countries like this experience. Um, the population is growing pretty quickly. There are real uh, uh, problems with, in terms of, of pressures on land use. That's going to offer tremendous opportunities for people involved in agricultural tech, aquaculture tech. Um, and I think Scotland's got some, some decent uh, technology in that area. And we, we've seen quite a bit of interest uh, f from companies in these sectors. Uh, Indonesia's uh, captive fish stocks have been declining quite significantly. So the agri agriculture industry really needs to, to pick up a lot of momentum. And I would offer opportunities in nurseries, feedstock provision, uh, just general agriculture production, vaccine development, the list is, is endless. A couple of days ago, I was having a call with the uh, East Java government and the UK's Trade Commissioner to Asia Pacific. Uh, during that call, we were discussing a new science park in, in East Java and aligned to that a huge increase in pharmaceutical investment and general interest in life sciences. I think uh, Adam has, has mentioned this. Aligned to that, 
there is a great need for in the Indonesian tertiary education sector uh, to boost its capability. And I really do think this is a huge opportunity for Scotland to get involved with. Um, I, since uh, the start of COVID, there is definitely a lot more interest uh, from Indonesia to engage in, in these two sectors. So I think it's something where we do have fantastic opportunities. I would like to make one last point, and it sort of links to that. The, the Deputy Governor of East Java, in the, in the case of that conversation, He's an alumnus of UK universities and therefore is more inclined to the UK uh, in terms of collaboration, you could argue. The UK, and including Scotland, has done very well in recent times attracting students from Indonesia. And I, when I go home, I make a point of meeting of, of many of them as, are possible, as possible when, I, uh, when I'm there and, and indeed catch up with them here in, in uh, Jakarta. Every one of them raves about their experience in Scotland. They've thoroughly enjoyed it and they get a tremendous amount out of it. When they come back to Indonesia, they form a very strong community. They all keep in touch. And this is across the whole breadth of the universities. That community really can be some of our best ambassadors. And really, if cultivated correctly, could be of tremendous benefit to Scottish business. Much has been made recently about tapping into the diaspora, which I agree with. However, not enough attention has, has been made into tap, uh, tapping into the alumni community, which quite frankly, I personally believe deserves an equal amount of effort. If you, now, if, now the post-study work visas are uh, not so much of an issue. We, sh we should be offering a lot of these Indonesian students internships or, or opportunities and Scottish companies that have ambitions to come out to Indonesia and ASEAN, because I think that would help develop a far greater understanding between Scotland and Indonesia and help these companies grow. So Doug, these are just a, a, few, a few points. I'm uh, happy to take any questions. Ainsley, thank you. That's uh, very helpful. And, and that latter point, um, you know, we ourselves as an institute could take some lessons in terms of uh, making connections with uh, those, those sorts of people. Um, I, I'm gonna ask very briefly for questions. We're really, really out of time because of the, the, the sort of presentations we've had, which have covered enormous amount of depth and I think it's been extremely valuable. Perhaps just a question for me, um, for, for Mr. Adam, to, to you perhaps to start with, um, just really on the geopolitics, because we haven't really touched it much, but we are seeing a global situation where, if you like, we're becoming divided and it's, it's becoming sort of pro-China, pro-America, and, and, and which, which side of the fence do you sit? Um, and, and, and I'm conscious that Indonesia uh, has been extending its links across the globe, but particularly with China, perhaps at the expense of the US. And so I just wondered what your thoughts are in general terms about how regional and, and more global geopolitics are playing out as it affects Indonesia at the moment. Um, I think we encourage, you know, the... Uh, you know, superpower in the U.S., the uh, China's and other countries also to, you know, to sit together in trying to solve their, you know, the differences, you know. And uh, I think being uh, uh, countries who are located in the, uh, South, uh, the uh, Southeast Asia with the ASEAN, uh, we are pleased that, you know, both two countries also part of, uh, you know, become uh, part of the ASEAN mechanisms you know, the uh, dialogue partner for the ASEAN. So uh, with that, I think uh, we are mindful that those two countries have some differences in, 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 in areas of their interests. But uh, if you ask, uh, you know, countries around the Southeast Asia, we don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, you know to, uh, to be forced to choose, you know, which, you know, which, you know, which side that you'd like to, you know, to, to work with. I think, uh, the uh, in terms of the investments, I think if you look at around the countries in the Asia, uh, China certainly plays an important role. They invest a lot in in in, in the Asia. Uh, one of the area which you know I uh, you know keep you know encouraging small uh, you know uh, private sector from from uh, you know from the UK from the US invest more in the in in ASEAN invest more, especially in Indonesia, because we can use Indonesia as a hub. You know, uh, as Lee already mentioned, you know, in terms of the populations, we had big, in terms of the, uh, the economy situations, Indonesia has also provide uh, a good uh, uh, entrance for, you know, uh, investor if they want to 
uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to reach the uh, market in the Asia. One thing which uh, I think I would like to highlight in terms of the uh, foreign uh, investors, uh, you mentioned about uh, China investors, which, uh, you know, in Indonesia uh, and other countries in Asia is very transparent. I think one of the important elements because of the, uh, the transfers of technology, you know, they're very, you know, uh, very keen also to help countries and regions providing transfer technology. So this is one of the area whereby when we discuss this with the investors, especially from the, you know, from the US, from uh, the Europeans, this is one of the, you know, you know, the issues which are not easy to solve, you know, the issues of transfer uh, of technology. So I think uh, in, 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 in uh, you know, in the future, uh, certainly we would like, you know, we uh, would like to, to have, you know, to, to see more of the investor from, from the Scotland, from the UK to come to Indonesia, invest more in Indonesia, not only investing, but also in investment that uh, provide a value aid for the industries in Indonesia and also, you know, uh, uh, willing also to share their uh, technological expertise with, uh, uh, with the Indonesian counterpart. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're sort of really out of time, to be honest. Um, but if I could, just for the last sort of, if I could ask uh, Mr. Dickey and, and uh, Mr. Mr. Mann, if you could just perhaps offer some final comments. I mean, clearly for Mr. Dickey, uh, Ainsley raised a couple of issues in terms of areas where he would like to see sort of progress. And I've just wondered if you could perhaps comment on, on things that you think that could either assist um, UK businesses investing in, in Indonesia or indeed advice for the UK as they depart from Brexit and um, in terms of how they establish a better deal with Indonesia. And perhaps Ainsley, you could comment on that latter point too. Um, and, and I think we'll draw to a close after that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, let me elaborate a little bit about the uh, opportunities in Indonesia. First of all, we are a full democratic uh, uh, country, so everything now is come uh, uh, you know more open even in the uh, uh, you know in the regional level to the uh, uh, local government they have their own uh, uh, you know uh, uh, their own uh, system their own decision making process especially on the uh, uh, licensing and you know all the uh, facility for the uh, uh, investment so in, in my uh, opinion, to avoid a complexity between uh, between uh, uh, investor and of course the the, the uh, bureaucrat, uh, bureau uh, bureaucratic uh, process, uh, this kind of uh, uh, talking, this kind of uh, uh, discussion uh, directly from the investor to the uh, 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 local authorities uh, is really important. Uh, it means that. Uh, of course, UK government, uh, Scotland uh, uh, government can have direct, uh, direct, uh, direct uh, information from the, the, the authorities, even from the local players, if they want to uh, seek the, the opinion about the Indonesian uh, uh, condition. Uh, this opened a lot of opportunities, I believe. Uh, the, the central government, of course, they are still uh, playing a, a significant role in providing uh, any kind of you know infrastructure, even we call it the suprastructure. But at the uh, decision making process, I do believe that the local government now have their own uh, kind of flexibility, as uh, 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 reflected in our uh, uh, webinar uh, two days ago with uh, 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 East Java government. Maybe Pa Ansleyman uh, can uh, elaborate more on these issues. And of course, uh, Pa Ashley also mentioned. Uh, we need to have a kind of deregulation how to 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 open uh, open up our uh, new uh, new uh, new opportunities such as uh, in the digital, digital area or maybe on the uh, renewable energy or also all those kind of uh, uh, aspect need to be uh, discussed uh, uh, between uh, uh, of course uh, 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 investor uh, central government and even the local government and of course, in this, in this case, uh, uh, our, our offices uh, uh, around the countries, 
will be more than happy to facilitate if there need to be uh, you know to 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 de to be more uh, what we call it more uh, uh, open uh, a discussion between uh, parties that's my my last comment i i believe that uh, uh, you know in the future we still have a lot of opportunities especially with the uh, and uh, in in the ground and in, in jakarta and on, on the indonesia i think uh, the role of Britain is really, really a significant uh, uh, for for facilitating the investment in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ainsley. Yeah, um, I mean a couple of things. A, a deregulation, I think, is important. Uh, we Scotland strong in renewable energy. The state-owned power company doesn't have the capacity to be able to do all the projects all over the country. And where Scotland is strong, it's an it it lends itself better to solutions in some of the, the more remoter parts of Indonesia, which are probably lower on the, the PLN's list for investment in the first place. Um, so I think we could actively, uh, as Pat Dickey's mentioned, we could actively work with one of the regions or one of the local governments and do a real focus in that area. It's such a big country that there's so much opportunity in, 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 in that area of renewable energy. Uh, when it comes to to trade. I mean, I, I just look at the trade deal that Indonesia has tried to do with, I just finished with Australia, it's taken years, and the deal they're trying to do with Europe, which is taking even longer. Um, and I'm not a big fan of these trade deals. I would much prefer in a way we could do incremental steps. It's, there's some things Indonesia wants to, to, to do more trade with, to, to inbound trade to the UK or Scotland. Um, it doesn't necessarily, these products don't necessarily compete with our products. So, I think um, we're a bit more sensible and we just took some of the key, the key areas that benefit both countries, we might be able to come up with some incremental trade, trade deal arrangements. And I, I think generally that, is, that should be a way forward after Brexit. I can't see anyone being able to go around the whole world inking comprehensive trade deals in a short space of time. But if, it, if the Indonesian government has a mindset to, to, to work with the UK and Scotland on doing it step by step, focusing on some key areas that benefit both countries. I think that could be, that would be a positive way to go. Anthony, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, and uh, I understand, you know, the, the opportunity to take some quick wins. And when you look at the statistics for Indonesia in terms of just growth and population, social capital, um, and, and, and everything else. It's, it's an enormous market which we, we can't afford to ignore. Um, we're, I'm afraid, over time, um, and I seem to have lost the moderator, unfortunately, due to technology, so um, I'm, I'm taking on more responsibility than I perhaps anticipated. But I would, first of all, um, you know, on behalf of all of our, uh, our viewers today, uh, wish to thank the Indonesian Embassy for their support, but, but particularly to our expert panel and to all of you gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Um, very grateful for you to um, give up your time and, and thank you for those very detailed um, and, and considered briefings which uh, we can obviously look at um, on the video in slower time in the future. So to all of you, thank you very much indeed. I'm very much um, appreciated it and thank you to our audience as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Very nice that people bring the awareness of people like of countries that are less known. Very striking and unexpected. A lot of the work speaks about a different culture in many different ways. Seeing the pieces interact with each other. Really impressive the way they made the, the first exhibition. It's been a lovely surprise. So exotic and colourful, but it's, it's really impressive. It's really exciting to have the opportunity through Cryptic to be engaged with that type of material and that type of content. So My favourite pieces are the photography works. I just really love the sort of covered faces, but the sort of collectiveness of the uniforms. I love them, there was just so much story there. I thought tonight's performance of the puppet group was just incredible. I was very moved. It really highlights the cultural richness coming out of Indonesia. Absolutely incredible, really. I, I didn't really know what 
to expect. I was quite amazed by how quickly I got wrapped up in it emotionally um, and how quickly, you know, how quickly you felt a connection with the puppets, with the characters. I thought it was pretty magical. It's amazing, I've never seen anything like it. So. help but laugh and you know dance. The way that the band works with each other is really incredible. This evening I thought was an amazing vital performance. I mean the percussion and the combination of percussion and singing is something I've never heard before. And I mean the whole festival has been a series of things I've not seen before. exciting and just to hear such um, exciting sounds. It was uh, really tremendous and powerful. And you could tell that everyone was just into it so much. It's such honest music and it's really original. You can hear traditions in it. Beautifully shamanic and uh, liberated and fierce. I thought it was really magical performance. Um, I think the dancers kind of took us to a different place, very slow and ethereal. The performance was really nice. It shows a lot of a rich culture from Indonesia and I think it was really interesting to see how uh, the culture is um, shown in front of a lot of people. It was really interesting, really good. I quite enjoyed it. It's been absolutely fascinating because I know nothing about Indonesia really and I feel that what I've been seeing and reading about has really informed me about the country. There's so many different parts, like that's, that's what I love about cryptic. There's just so many elements and whatever your mood is, there's going to be something for it.